Elena shared in the, the memory verse that she shared about we all have gifts. Um, we all have things in our lives and abilities that God has blessed us with that he wants to work through and work in in our lives. Uh, we've been looking at prayer the last few weeks, and we're going to continue to be doing that. And uh, we've been talking a little bit about uh, David's journey and uh, also King Saul's journey. And I mentioned a while back how, how King Saul became the king is Israel wanted a king like the world had. God wanted to be their king, and he wanted to speak to them through his religious leaders, and he wanted them to be a, a nation different than anyone else. But they insisted on a king, so, so God gave them King Saul as their king. He had a desire for King Saul to use his resources for him for the entirety of his life. And he failed to do that. And at this point uh, of the story where we're at is here's all the things that have kind of been going on uh, in, in Saul's life. Oh, on. told myself to make sure of that. Okay, so real quick. There is no you version today. If you notice, the one who reminds me to get things done and to do them on a timely manner is not here today. I had all my stuff done, sent it to her on Thursday. She sent me a picture back of all the things I needed to fix on my slides. I got those things fixed, and I fixed a couple things in the wrong spot. Jolie helped me with those this morning. But yesterday, I completely forgot to put everything on you version. So it's not there this week. It'll be back next week. And so you'll be able to also be able to give on that again. Uh, if you want to give electronically and you don't have that in front of you, you can go to our website. There's a link there to give electronically as well. My wife is back helping her parents move. They sold their house and they're buying a smaller, uh, newer home that's going to help them be able to, to move into uh, retirement. So hopefully we'll be able to see them around here a little bit more often, but not too often. So those who are laughing were here when my mother-in-law was here, and yeah, I had to deal with that afterwards too. So, but I love my in-laws; they're great. And uh, but my wife is there helping them, and so I'm gonna do the best I can to to remember things in the next couple of weeks. So, how we pray matters. Here is where uh, King Saul is if, since the time he has become king, and he's been leading. Saul's heart is hardened towards David. And since his heart is hardened towards David, it's also become hardened towards God. Saul failed to follow God's commands. As a king, God wanted him to do certain things. He told him to take one nation out and, and take them out completely, save nothing of the resources, just destroy everything because there, it, there was so much evil there, it just needed to be destroyed. And he failed to do that. And so because of that, God tells him he's going to take his kingdom from him eventually. But even though he had that sentence against him, God still wanted him to be his king and to seek his will. So he's hardened towards David. Now he wants to kill David. David has fled to the Philistines. He's tried to kill David several times. Now David is so desperate, he's fled to the Philistines. This is a really big deal. This is fleeing to ISIS for safety. Think of it in that way. He's fleeing to one of his mortal enemies for safety. And now the Philistines are coming after Israel. And Saul is scared and is wanting to hear from God. That's where we're at in the story. If you will please stand with me as I read through uh, the Word of God today. We're going to read the whole chapter. So uh, here we go, and there's some crazy names in here. In those days, the Philistines gathered their forces for war to fight against Israel. And, okay, how are we going to say it? Akish? We're going to go with Isht, because I have no idea how to say it right. Said to David, understand that you and your men are to go out with me in the army. David said to Ish, very well, you shall know what your servant can do. And Ish said to David, and they had to put it in there over and over again, very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. This is a Philistine uh, king that is, is talking to David, if you, if you haven't caught up with that. 
Now Samuel had died. He's the one who anointed Saul as king, and he has also anointed David, letting him know that he is going to be king after Saul. He it was the religious leader of Israel, and they believed in him, and they followed him, but they didn't want him to, to lead them for God, so they have Saul instead. Samuel has died. And all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the, those guys, I cannot say it for the life of me, I've tried over and over, out of the land. The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel and they encamped at Gilbo. And when Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid. And his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dream or by Urim or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And this servant said to him, Behold, there is a medium in Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other garments and went. <clears throat> he and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, Divine, for me a, <clears throat> by a spirit, and bring up for me whomever, whomever I shall name to you. The woman said to him, Surely you know that Saul, what Saul has done, how he has cut off the medium and the, those ones. Excellent, thank you. From the land, why then are you lying a trap for me, for my life, to bring about my death? But Saul swore to her by the Lord. Interesting, with kind of where he's at with things. As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, whom shall I bring up for you? He said, bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, he, <clears throat> she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Do not be afraid. What, <clears throat> what do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up out of the earth. He said to her, What is his appearance? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is wrapped in a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel. And he bowed with his face to the ground and, and paid homage. Then Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress, for the Philistines are warring against me. And God has turned away from me and, answered me no, and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams, Therefore, I have summoned you to tell me what I shall do. And Samuel said, Why then do you ask me since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me. For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbors. <clears throat> David, because you... <clears throat> and gave it to your neighbor, David... Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel also with you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me. The Lord will give the armies of, the, of Israel also into the hand of of the Philistines. You may be seated. There is a lot going on in this passage, and every time I've ever read this passage, it reveals more and more to me. There is a lot going on here. One of the last things we see there, that, that Saul's decisions don't only affect him and his family, but they're going to affect the nation of Israel. 
And here's the thing. Israel made that choice when they wanted him as king. Because there's part of us that wants to go, well, that's not fair. No, they chose for him to determine how things would go for them as a people. When God wanted to be the one that would determine how things went, and if they followed him, he would continually bless them, watch over them, and take care of them. There would be no one in between them and God other than a priest who would be the voice to them and then would be the voice to God for the people as well. I am so thankful that I have Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and as my high priest. I do not have an earthly king. I do not have an earthly priest. But I have the Son of God whom I can pray to and through to God, our Creator. That is a beautiful gift that we have in Christ. And that is the gift that we have because if anyone comes through the Father, through the Son, no one comes through the Father except through the Son. But everyone can come through the Father, through the Son, if they profess Him as their Lord and Savior. That's the Old Testament speaking into the New Testament truth. The whole point of the Old Testament, I believe, is to point us to God and to, and to worship and how we can see how he wants to love us and how he wants to take care of us and provide for us. God had a desire to take care of Israel and to, for them to be seen and known as his people. His desire was that any army that would come up against them would be destroyed because he was with them. But Saul is filled, filled with fear at this time when he's going in the battle because he understands and knows that God is not with him. I believe there's some truths that we can take away from this story that are very important for us today and each and every day. The first truth to learn is this. Obedience to God matters. We are saved by the grace of Christ. And we are eternally secure. But here's the truth. If we want to have immense blessings in our life, if we want to continue to have the blessings that God has for us in our life, obedience to God matters. Seeking to live by His will and not ours will make an immense difference in our lives. Saul was going to lose the kingdom of Israel no matter what. But here's the thing. If he would have stayed obedient to God and he would have kept throwing himself at God for, for God to redeem him and to save him, his kingdom could have gone on for who knows how long. But Saul determined that the next day would be his last because of the choices he made and how he decided to seek for shelter and for peace. Because he chose to seek outside of God and his will. He decided to pray, to spiritually look for answers outside of God. Even when he made it difficult to do that because he had removed all of those from the places within his own country that were doing this. The second truth is this, faith matters. At some point, Saul had lost his faith in the one that had anointed him king. And he was looking for answers outside of God. When that army was coming against him as king of Israel, he should have known that they had no chance as long as God was with them. If he would have put his faith in God, even though David wasn't there, who had gone and had several victories for him, even though David wasn't there, he didn't, he didn't need David there. He needed a God there with him. And if he would have had faith in that, the, he wouldn't have had fear. We are to, the third truth is we are to fear the Lord and not man. We can lose our faith in the midst of pressures from people around us. When the Philistines come to our borders and they're wanting to attack and take us on, we can lose our faith because we start to fear the world more than we fear God. And fear is an interesting thing because we're called to fear the Lord God Almighty. But in fearing Him, there's a respect for Him and there's this understanding that He is God. He's the all-powerful, omnipotent. Gosh, why do I try to use these words when I'm not ready for it? He's everywhere all the time, and he's got everything under control. 
That is the truth of who he is. And when we have a clear understanding of him, when we have that fear of him, he will take care of everything and that will build our faith. They're, they're interchangeable with one another, but they're separate but the same. Fourth truth is if we want to hear from God more than we want to worship him, we will come up short in life. I believe that's what's happening to Saul here. Saul had the, king, the, the kingdom of Israel given to him. He had this young boy, David, come and be, beat this giant. His armies have gone out with this young man. They become powerful. But here's what happened. People started coming and singing, Saul has killed his thousands, but David his ten thousands. And all of a sudden, the kingdom wasn't about reflecting who God is in them as a people, but the kingdom became about who Saul is as their king, leading them. And he can't have someone there taking away the focus from him. Saul became more worried about worshiping himself than worshiping God. And so when the Philistines came, he was more concerned about hearing from God than worshiping God. Here's, I think, a very important lesson for us to learn in our prayer lives. We must humble ourselves to the Lord God Almighty. We must be willing to kneel to Him out of worship and praise to Him before we can ever hear from Him. Saul had become the king and he had been so worried about everyone kneeling to him that he failed to remember to kneel to the Lord. He failed to remember to worship the Lord God Almighty. And the communication gap grew between him and God. His heart was hardened. His fears had separated him from his faith. And he got to the point that he was willing to look anywhere and everywhere to hear something. The, fu <laughs> the fifth truth we can learn may be the most important one. We are in a spiritual battle for our lives and our souls. Does anyone, as I was reading through that passage, go, wow, that's some really weird stuff? He called up a dead man's soul, spirit, whatever from wherever, whatever was going on here. Samuel is dead, but he is there before Saul, speaking and talking to him, telling him, you're going to die tomorrow. Samuel was still the prophet who loved the Lord, who was speaking for him, even from the grave. Here's something, young people especially, I hope you hear this and understand this. There is a battle for your soul. And it is not only in the physical world, it is in the spiritual world as well. Do not open up doors and pathways to things you do not understand and you cannot control. Because that's what Saul, Saul did. He went and went into a form of prayer, calling up a spirit. And in doing so, he condemned himself for the very next day. He made the choice to let darkness in to that it would rule him and not the light of God's love for him. I'm, I'm amazed at how many of us as Christians fail to understand the importance of the spiritual battle and the possibilities and the powers that are around us. 
and the risky things we could step into that are outside of God's will of how he wants us to worship and how he wants us to hear from him. From TV shows to to board games that people say are games, they're not games. Young people, old people, wherever you are, if there is a Ouija board in the building, stay out of that building. Because that is a gateway to things you do not want to deal with. That is stepping into the same room that Saul stepped into with this, with this woman to open up pathways that you don't want to have opened up in your life. And if you have been there, call out to God. He is greater than anything. But why put yourself at risk? Because the truth is this. God is in a battle for your soul. And the enemy will do anything and everything to steal it away from you. And we see here that Saul has lost the battle. Time and time again, he has had opportunities to turn the ship and to change his journey. But he just kept going down and making these choices. And for some of you in this room, you need to ask, are you going to keep going in the same direction you're going? Are you going to start seeking and living in a new way? So how do we pray? Because that's what it really comes down to. How do we pray? How do we worship God? How do we pray to where we can have the answers from God when we need the answers? How can we pray to God so we're worshiping him and we're not just calling out to him like he's a genie in the bottle? How many of you ever heard the statement, there's no atheist in a foxhole? Only one hand went up. I think more of you have heard it than that, I hope. I had an uncle who was an atheist. He passed away several years ago, and that was a very hard thing to deal with and to understand. And now, you know, I have cousins that are atheists also, and so... It's a statement that I don't think is all that true. But I think it's a statement that can really speak to us of how we have an easy, light misunderstanding of prayer to God. If things are really bad and I call back to him, all I have to do is rub the lamp and he'll hear me and call out. It's kind of what Saul was doing when the Philistines came. He's just kind of like, hey, God, I need to hear from you. And he forgot what God desired was for him to worship God, for him to say, look, these are not, this is not my nation. This is God's nation that he has empowered me, that he has entrusted me to lead. I'm going to look for God for direction of how he wants me to go about this. He didn't do that. He didn't go into prayer to discover worship with God, to let other things come through it. So how do we pray? How do we pray to God so we can be worshiping him and praising him? If you've ever noticed, I try to always pray by starting off with how great and amazing God is. That He's the creator of the heavens and earth. Because the more I speak it, the more I'll believe it to be true, and the more I will know it. Just look at the Psalms and how often they start off with praise to God. So Jesus in Matthew um, is telling his his disciples how to pray. So if there's anyone you're going to learn to pray from, why not Jesus Christ? Because he's fully man, fully God, and he was probably the best example we see of how to pray. That Jesus didn't wait till things were bad. He went off, he went before he was on the cross and prayed about being on the cross and how to get through it and how to be empowered to be the sacrifice that needed to be paid for humanity. So this is how Jesus tells us to pray. And if you'll see, I've put in parentheses a few words that I've put in there. As I read these lines, this is where I felt these truths fit into these different spots. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We looked at these, these truths that I put before us today and, and what they mean. How do we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really believe that? Are you willing to not only pray that, but seek to live that each and every day? God's will be done. In my life, in my life, as it's desired in heaven. I don't know about you, but I think we all struggle with that in t- at, at times. Because I like to think life is like Burger King. I can have it my way. If I want extra mayo, I can have extra mayo. If I want light mayo, I can have light mayo. If I want extra tomato, I get extra tomato. No lettuce. Double the onions. My wife's out of town. (laughs) But here's the thing. Even as Christians, often that's how we look at our lives. And that's just, we kind of just want to order things up from God of, of kind of how we want it. And we forget, you know what? Your will be done. Lord, your will, not mine. And then we have to remember how, how Paul prayed, Lord, forgive me. For often I do that which I do not want to do, and I do not do that which I want to do for you, Lord. Please forgive me. And you see, and that's the beauty of the Christian walk and the Christian life. It's not about what I've done, but what he has done for me. And because he has freed me from my sins, because he has brought me salvation in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, now I can look to be God's instrument because it's not about me. It's about him and what he wants to do in my life. But here's the problem. Usually when I pray, I want to pray all about me. Do you find it interesting that Jesus made the how do you pray prayer about forgiving others their trespasses? Because if we don't forgive others, we can't be forgiven ourselves. If that doesn't scare you, maybe it should. Because I'm guessing almost everyone in this room knows someone who has hurt them so bad that they think they don't have to forgive them. Well, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. Just imagine if Jesus did that to us. He didn't, though. He says, I forgive you, it is finished. It is separated from you as far as the east is from the west. Now go and do likewise. When we pray, let us pray heralding God for who he is and what he's done. And may we seek the ability to be who he desires us to be each and every day. The truth that we can take from this story is this. Obedience to God matters. The second one, faith matters. Fear of the Lord and not of man in this world. Our worship to God matters. And the fact is, is there is a spiritual battle for our souls. And we need to guard ourselves against it. We need to be in the Word. We need to be in right relationship. And we need to seek His will and not ours. Because if we will, He will give us the power and the ability to beat any foe. 
He will allow us to slay the giants that are in our lives. He will allow us to see the blessing that is before us today in the midst, in the midst of the struggle that is life. Dear Heavenly Father, we just give you praise today. Lord, I ask that you would just help each and every one of us to see these truths in the way that we need to see them in our lives so we can start to peel away the layers that are keeping us from being who you want us to be. When we ask that our prayer that your will be that your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives on earth today as you so desire from heaven. Lord, put it in our ability, put it in our strength, in our desire that we will bring heaven to earth so that you will be known. So there'll be forgiveness of sins that are unforgivable so that souls can be saved for eternity. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Let's stand.